Hey, video diary. I just did a gig in this building, which is a private club. And this is my gig rig and my flamenco and my amp. I'm right outside Hunter, which is a college that Forrest would talk about a lot. It's part of CUNY. I graduated from Lehman, which is in the Bronx, which is used to be part of this school. Whenever I do these gigs, I think of him because of this school. It's not a pretty place. I was just in Europe where you see some pretty places. But mother and son right here. See how their bodies are shaped the same? That's one of the things that is the most upsetting is just being without Forrest's body, his physical form. Just to be near him, that's hard. And it's more distant every day. I'm sure I have some pieces of him, but it's not the same. Sorry, I gotta get across the street. When I'm playing, sometimes I'm not, sometimes I play well and sometimes I don't. I blow clams. But I know how to make my my mistakes sound pretty good. And when I play alone, you can't tell because I can alter the form and I was playing scales and arpeggios in this gig and it worked. Oh. And I was thinking, like, what if I, what if I died myself, you know, today, tonight, and this is as, as far as I got with it all, you know, I just, this is it, like all my, all the clams, all the, you know, all the heights that you can detect but can't reach. All that stuff, all the judgment, the resentments and stuff like that. And, and then I thought, um, that the whole just daily experience is the moment, the moments are extremely pleasurable, you know, of playing and learning and, and, and it's not about being anything else than living in a moment. I mean, you want to be able to play better and better, and we do that. But enjoying the process. Forrest died when he was 23 years old. 
And I was just combing back in my brain of all the... All the shit I did. Mostly explorations. A couple of attempted shortcuts. I was once had these gigs that I was driving home drunk, like fucking drunk. And they paid me so much money and they fed me all this food and the, they, I drank a couple of beers and a couple of whatevers and and they loved me and all that stuff somehow made it okay to drive drunk. Oh shit. All the beautiful people. That forest won't meet. I've exhausted my ability to feel, I guess, the rage. I feel the, I still feel all that, but I, I've exhausted my ability to express the rage. And now I feel like just more, just sorrow. All the people who love each other, you know, just up and down the street. Wow, it's almost too much for words. I, I probably will keep this post. This is the longest day of the year, the solstice. This light out. The other thing I have been thinking about, and it was in the context, or one of the ways in which I experienced is in the context of a guy who had just um, got out of a, a difficult relationship and um, was just, let's say, meeting women again and dating or whatever, or was meeting someone who had also just gotten out of a difficult relationship and the whole first conversation started with just their baggage, you know? And I was like, um, I just had that feeling that like nobody really cares. Like the only reason he would care about her baggage is to score points, but he doesn't care about her baggage. And she doesn't care about his baggage. So when he was like telling me, but my heart is still broken, and I'm like, man, you are f missing the entire point, which is nothing matters. None of this matters. It's what we make of our time. It's what we have the ability to, to, uh, um, uh, we have some freedom to adjust our thoughts but like like just meeting somebody and then meeting your baggage you know 
and we laughed about it but on a on a on a more just to expand that concept like i know it's true that nobody gives a damn about what happened to my son a few of his friends you know and maybe just the horror of this experience of what it's like to lose somebody blindsided didn't know that they were using heroin they were your everything they're just about to graduate he should be graduating from school right now all i'm seeing is graduation gowns but nobody cares uh, my, my friends or people who know me or whatever, you know, they, you know, they don't, maybe it's just no one has a context for it. So I think that's just a bigger truth that if a neighbor's pet dies you're like oh well that's you know that's just that's terrible but that's part how long did they live oh they lived a good long time but that neighbor is devastated you know and when it happens to you it's the same thing but your neighbor looks at you and says well that was you know how things go I'm in constant conversation with an imaginary forest in my mind I can't believe I'm still living and he's not. I understand why people get so despondent that they understand that their existence here is doesn't matter. And I also understand why it does matter. I just experienced. I'm experiencing it right now. That's why I'm so, so fucking upset with my son. It's like, how could he take that stupid way? Drugs. We got high together. We smoked marijuana wax and loved it. I didn't smoke actual marijuana anymore because I don't like burning, but I love that stuff. But heroin, and I know, I know in my heart, in my mind, that he probably would have rather died than drag out a you know drug addict situation because of how deeply offensive that was to me is to me you know not because of him not not that I judged him for using it just like to waste it, your life on drugs like that but obviously I don't understand that it's a sickness that you can't control and that blah 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 shit still don't get that this is the longest day of the year I'm only doing these videos until his one year death anniversary and I'm not going to do them anymore and they're just going to live in this capsule I'm speechless